Hey everyone, this is Amy with Amy Astro. So happy to see everyone out here today. Uh, as you can see, we've got a little setup, little different setup tonight. I am outside uh, waiting for darkness uh, underneath red light of all things. Last week, we went through the pole master and learned how to polar align with that. This week, we're gonna try something different. We are gonna use sharp cap and see how that routine compares to the pole master routine. And um, then you can pick and choose which one you wanna use. Whether you wanna buy the pole master, or let's say once you buy everything about 280-ish dollars, or if you wanna buy an annual subscription to Sharp Cap, which is about $15 a year. So you decide which one as actually works for you. Cause remember, one size does not fit all and you have to make this decision for yourself. But I'm gonna show you Sharp Cap tonight and you can compare it to last week's video and decide which routine works best for you. So we'll be back when it gets dark out. Let's take a look at SharpCap's website. Their website is sharpcap.co.uk and I'm over here on their home page and it lists out what SharpCap is capable of doing and it does a whole lot more than just polar alignment. We're just barely scratching the surface of what this program can do. If you want to do these items here, if it says Pro, you have to purchase the Pro version. Other than that, this software is completely free. But the polar alignment that we're showing you tonight is part of the pro package. Okay, let's start with the download tab. Okay, and on the download page, this is where you can get the free version. And it does everything except for what it was labeled out as the pro in the first page. And if you want the pro version, you come over here to buy Sharp Cap Pro. And it'll walk you through how to go about paying it. You can see that it is 10 pounds. Um, UK or in the US it's about $15 this is a subscription and it is good for about one year let's go back to sharp caps page all right and there is a section here pro features it tells you what the pro version gets you in addition to all the free stuff it does polar alignment does live flat frame correction dark frame subtraction autofocus assist um, it does a whole lot more, okay? But if you want to do the polar alignment, you will need to get the pro version of the software. If not, just check out the free version and uh, see where it takes you. They've got some great documentation and there's a lot of videos online. All right, so let's get started. It is now officially dark out. And... The first thing we want to do when we use Sharp Cap is make sure your camera is in focus. So I took it through uh, Sequence Generator Pro and I ran it through an autofocus routine and made sure that it was completely in focus. That's kind of important here. And let's open up Sharp Cap. And right now, the scope, the mount itself, is um, not on. There's no computer driving it. We're gonna leave it completely powered off at this point. All right, so here we go. Here's Sharp Cap. Let's go up here to Cameras. And you should be able to find your camera right here in the list if you've installed all the drivers. If not, you can rescan for cameras and it should be able to find something there. But we're gonna use the 183. And let's turn it on. All right, now we're gonna go over here. Let's see, I think it's tools and the polar align routine. So it gives you some instructions down here at the bottom about polar alignment. And you can go ahead and read through all of these, but the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hit there and say next. And it will walk us through everything that it is trying to do. Now it is trying to do um, a plate solve on everything and let's see let's probably bump up the 
exposure to the camera because right now it's using the main imaging camera and it is going through a light pollution filter also. Let's get a longer exposure here. Let's go up to a four second image. And we want it to say right down here, most recent frames solved. And once it says solved, it says up here, press next button before you move anything. So let's press next. All right, now what it's wanting to do is to rotate our RA axis. So we're gonna come over here to the scope and we're gonna loosen up our clutch. And we're gonna take this down until it is parallel to the ground, okay? So the scope is on my left. Let's tighten down the clutch. Okay, so now that I've rotated everything, we're gonna say next. Now I haven't done any type of polar alignment to it right now. So obviously it is telling me it is really, really bad, okay? So it's wanting me to press the next button. There we go. Now right here it is showing me how far off I am. And it is telling me to move my mount down and move it over to the left. Well, let's go left first because that's just a little bit easier. Loosening the right, I'm tightening the left. And since we are on a four second image, I've got to give it a enough time to catch up with me. I'm just going to hang tight here for a couple seconds and see what I've done. Okay, pushing left some more. Is that number going down? Left some more. You just got to be patient with this since I am on a four second exposure. I could probably knock it down to two, but we'll stay with four for right now. All right, let's move it some more. And considering I just dropped this tripod down during the day in the general direction, that's not too horrible. Yeah, I could have done better, but that's okay. All right, getting a little bit better. I'm still moving the left knob as it's tightening and I'm giving it about a half a turn each time. All right, we're getting better. Now you can see right here where I'm going to is here and this is where I'm starting from. So I'm trying to get all the way up there and I'm just concentrating on the AZ knobs at this moment. Yeah, that's a little better. All right, after this image, I think we'll start tackling the altitude a little bit. Tighten this guy down some. All right, I'm loosening the front knob. And it says that I wanna take the altitude down. So to go down, I need to go counterclockwise. Let's see if we guessed right here. All right, turning. We're starting at one, two, one. Where does it go next? There you go, that's the right direction. Let's go a little bit more. That looks good, I guess I can be probably a little bit more aggressive with this. Yeah, it's looking better. And the goal is to get these as close to zero as you possibly can. And a lot of that's gonna depend on what your atmosphere is looking like at that moment. All right, I'm gonna see if I can speed up these exposures just a little bit. Will it run under two seconds? And I'm doing all this counterclockwise on this mount. All right, that's looking much better. Let's get it down to seconds. All right, let's go back to the left knob. 
So when you're really this far off, it does take a bit longer than doing the pole master. But I believe what we're going to find is the accuracy is going to be just a bit better because this is doing plate solving. If you look up here, you can tell I'm definitely getting closer. You can see things, they start moving around on you. All right, I want to go up, so now I got to go clockwise a little bit. At least I'm out of the poor range, I'm down to fair. I want to get to excellent. There we go, we're back to solving again. I gotta go right. There we go, now I wanna show you. Notice how these now change to parallel lines. Goal is to get the two parallel lines to match up on top of each other. So right now, this is looking pretty good. It's gonna bounce between the two. And a lot of that's the atmosphere. So I'm just gonna tighten those down just a little bit and not mess with them. And we wanna move up. So I'm gonna just tighten down the altitude up front and see if that shifts me up just enough. Nope, not quite. All right, let's go up. Up is clockwise. We're getting close, check that out. That looks really good right there. And my total error is 44 seconds. I really want this to stay in excellent for as long as possible. It says I need to go up some more. Let's try just a little bit more. All right, we're at excellent, 22 seconds off. Now we're just at good. That looks really, really good right there. Let's see how it looks after a couple frames go through. Look at that. It's just bouncing around, but given it is very humid out right now, that's not bad. I'm feeling pretty good about this, guys. Because it's bouncing between right and left. So if I was to correct this, it would keep bouncing. And how is it doing this? This is bouncing between up and down. And I think it's just our air. It could be vibrations in the ground also. We've had a lot of rain lately and it is very soft out here. But I'm gonna call that polar aligned. I am happy with that number. All right, so now from here, you're gonna take your, uh, let's see. We'll disconnect our camera. So we'll close this out and disconnect my camera and then just close the program. And I'll put my scope back in the home position manually. I'll turn the power on and start up EQ mod and finish with my routine. All right, folks, so after that last polar alignment routine, I ended up turning everything off and went inside for a couple hours. I was waiting for my target to get high enough for me to image. And when I went back, I decided to run sharp cap one more time just because it was bouncing around earlier. And when I did, I just needed a very small adjustment and I was able to get it to be about seven or eight inches out, uh, not inches, seconds out which ended up being really good so later on in the night and I was checking my graph for um, PhD I took a snapshot of it real quick so I didn't have my recording set up but this is what it ended up looking like and I don't get that every day that's that's a pretty good graph for me and I'm extremely happy with that but this is what I wanted to show you here this total it says 0.79 seconds now as long as this stays below your camera scale which my scale is 1.17, then I know that my images are going to turn out sharp and crisp without any star trails at all. So that's the number that you need to watch. 
Make sure that it stays underneath your image scale and you will do just fine. All right, and one last thing, let me show you my new website that I have up and running. It is amyastro.com, and this is set up just for you. So if you wanna see something, let me know what you would like. I am going to attempt to do a weekly blog where I'll give you some of my thoughts of what's going on, and I'll answer your questions. And as always, I have all my latest videos with a nice, easy, single-click link there for you. I've got tabs, one for video, one for blog, and they're, uh, they're, I like them. I, I think I've got them organized well. And basically, it's the order that I publish them at, you know. All right, but also I tell you about my gear, my Raven Scope, my Freedom Scope, and a soon-to-be-announced new scope. But you'll have to stay tuned, and I will, uh, I'll show that to you real soon. But this is what I've got for you guys today. A uh, special shout out thank you to a David in Arizona and a Keith in Georgia for making a donation on my website. I truly appreciate that. That will definitely help me keep this up and running because you know it does cost me a little bit of money to keep this going for you. So every little bit does help and I appreciate all of you. But until next week, this is Amy Astro, and I am wishing you all some wonderful health and some clear skies, and I will see you in a week. Goodbye, y'all. Oh, oh.